Hey guys, I am Dr. Stephanie Shuttler and I am starting a series on becoming a wildlife biologist. So I'm a wildlife biologist. I've been in this field for 17 years. I have my PhD in biological sciences. My channel is all about empowering scientists and inspiring you to conserve the natural world. And today I'm going to break down what a biologist does and um, what they are. So when you Google wildlife biologists, I bet you a million bucks, you're gonna have pictures of people holding mammals, especially charismatic mammals like big cats. And although this can technically be true, I'll talk about that in a second, um, it's largely false. In fact, when I did a Google search, there was one picture of somebody like actually touching a cheetah. That is not what a wildlife biologist does. So what does a wildlife biologist do? What does it mean? So let's break it down. Biology, um, bio is life, and biology is essentially the study of life. So wildlife basically refers to um, native species. So these are non-domesticated species, and they are living in their native range. Um, so this would not be um, exotic animals living in a captive environment. Um, that if, we, if you were to study exotic animals in a captive environment, we would not call that wildlife biology. Um, when we talk about wildlife, you can be a wildlife biologist and study um, wildlife outside their native range, but usually we call those species invasive species. Now, going back to the photos of the scientist holding um, those charismatic, super cute animals. So lots of those photos actually are wildlife biologists um, and they do get to hold um, cats temporarily or whatever animals they're studying temporarily, but this is only a small portion of wildlife biologists. Hi, myself, I study mammals and I have never held a wild animal because I've studied animals using non-invasive techniques, both through genetics and camera traps. So the people who get to cuddle, <laughs> use this word cuddle <laughs> in, a, in a joking way, um, they are actually attaching um, GPS trackers or some sort of tag to the animals to be able to track them. So these GPS trackers are usually um, attached via collar, although they can be backpacks or even just stuck onto the animal's back. And they require a team of vets um, to anesthetize the animal, and that's the opportunity for you to take a photo op close up with that animal. But even if you do, the, do this as part of your job, that's an extremely, extremely minor part of your job. GPS trackers are really expensive, and you're not going to be able to collar that many animals, maybe a dozen. I've seen some studies that have had hundreds of animals, but usually this takes over years. So even if you are working on a telemetry study that is um, using these GPS collars to study the movements of these animals, your actual days going into the field and, um, and capturing these animals to be able to put the trackers on them is going to be a very small portion of your time. Wildlife biologists, um, they're really spending most of their time studying wildlife. And back in the day, that did include a lot of animal observations, but now we have technology helping us out. So in addition to those GPS trackers, which collect hundreds to thousands of data points. We also have technology like camera traps, which capture thousands of images, and we have hundreds of locations. So really, what wildlife biology is nowadays is figuring out how to analyze all of those big data. So if you wanna become a wildlife biologist, you have to be really excited about analyzing data. As mentioned before, wildlife biology is the study of wildlife. This means that you are using the scientific method. And I think a lot of people think when they hear studying wildlife, they imagine people going outside, looking at animals, and that certainly can be part of the job. But Really, to become a wildlife biologist, you have to be driven by the questions. So 
while going outside and maybe observing animals and summarizing behavioral characteristics that they have was something that was done in the past. And it still is done. Much more of the science of wildlife biology is really about answering scientific questions. If you want to become a wildlife biologist, therefore, you have to be interested in science. So some key signs would be like, are you always questioning the natural world? Are you always wondering why animals do what they do? If those questions keep you up at night, then that is a good sign. You would be really interested in wildlife biology. Writing is also a big part of wildlife biology. We write up our results of the studies that we do for peer-reviewed publications. And again, I think when people think research, they think that we are like watching animals and making these descriptive reports of what they eat or what the animals are doing. And most of that research has been done. And if it hasn't been done, it's really hard to get funding to do that. So if you're going into the field of wildlife biology, again, expect to deal with a lot of data. A lot of people go into this field because they love animals. That's why I went to this field. But you have to forget about the animal part to see if you would still like it. Um, and as I mentioned before, technology is such a big part. So even if you do go to the field and watch animals like I did, you are ultimately working with these data points. And some people actually study animals and they never even see them. My advisor, she studied forest elephants. She never saw forest elephants in the park that she worked in. Um, and if you go to my blog, fancyscientist.com, on um, this one, Becoming a Wildlife Biologist, FAQs Answered, you'll see a couple of tweets of scientists who also did their whole thesis or dissertation work without ever seeing their study species. You really have to love science, statistics, asking and answering questions. Those are the important things um, to become a wildlife biologist. Going back to the Google, Google <laughs> going, going back to the Google image search, if you are one of those people who has to be close to animals, wants to be handling them, touching them, a better fit for you might be a career in zoos or wildlife veterinary medicine. Those are also really competitive careers, and with zoos, um, they're actually getting away from um, contacting the animals as much. A lot of them do protected contact where the animals are behind barriers. But being a zookeeper or a zoo curator, you will be able to see um, animals um, every day. If you liked this video, then um, head over to my blog, fancyscientist.com, and sign up for my weekly newsletters. You'll get um, tips for careers in science and conservation tips, and then you'll also be the first to know about my book, which is all about entering the field of wildlife biology. Um, I share with you my experiences, what I wish I would have done, um, what I think you should do for different career types. So get on that newsletter, and you will be the first to know when it comes out which will be later this year if you like this video please please share it you can subscribe to my channel too and thank you for watching uh, see you soon and check out the next video in this series where I answer more of your questions